So good afternoon, everybody. When I joined Fastnet more than four years ago, people thought I was crazy. And maybe I was. But today, I feel like a kid in a candy store. I couldn't be more happier to see so many electric vehicles here today in Arnhem and seeing so many charges and so many people being involved in making EV charging and driving an EV a success. When Fastnet was founded about eight years ago, our founders had a clear vision. We wanted to bring freedom for electric drivers, for drivers of electric vehicle as well. Uh, like a petrol car, you want to go everywhere where you want uh, without having to worry about range or about charging. So the vision was to create a network throughout the Netherlands of charging stations so that you can take your electric car everywhere. Mind you, this was eight years ago. So by that time, there were no uh, fast charging stations and there was only one car you could get, the Nissan Leaf. They had to do a lot of effort in talking to the government in, uh, in order to acquire the right locations. And the right locations in our mind were locations along the highway. So surface areas where there's already a petrol station and already a parking stations and sometimes a restaurant. We wanted to build charging stations on those sites as well. We acquired around 200 concessions to build fast charging stations. And, and we started designing and getting the permits, grid connections and so on. And about five years ago, we opened the first charging stations. And that's also around the time when I joined uh, Fastnet. Since then, we've done a lot of work. We built around 80 stations, and in fact, we, built, we opened 81 uh, yesterday in Germany. We're currently um, constructing about another dozen stations in Germany. So we have a pretty dense network in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, it's, it's OK to drive anywhere. We are a relatively small country, and we have a relatively high number of stations. Uh, in Germany, we're just getting started. We have the first five stations online, and we have another dozen or so either under construction or planned to be uh, constructed next year. Next to that, we also started the preparation for the first stations in the UK. And you may wonder, why do you start all the way up there in Newcastle? Uh, and, but there's a logic to it. There's a nice ferry connection between the Netherlands and Newcastle. So for us, it's almost like going next door. If you take the ferry into the UK, you will arrive in Newcastle. So it will not stop here. Uh, we have the ambition to create a European network of 1,000 stations so that anyone can charge wherever they, wherever they please. We're growing rapidly. The, of course, the EV market is growing rapidly as well, but we are growing even faster than the EV market uh, is. Our growth rate is about 10% month on month. So that's exponential growth rate uh, and not linear growth rate. Uh, even internally, it is sometimes hard to comprehend what exponential growth means. So if you're planning ahead and you're looking six or 12 months in the future, it is not taking the number of today and just doubling it. No, it's taking the number and tripling it or quadrupling it even. So it requires a lot of uh, preparation uh, to be prepared for 2019, 2020 and, and onwards. So this is one of the busiest stations that we have. It is located near Schiphol Airport. Uh, it receives about 100 visitors a day. Already today, in the current market conditions, when there's still relatively few EVs, we see a station that is fully occupied. Eight electric vehicles can charge at the same time. And as you can uh, see, that is also happening. It, this is not a, a Photoshop picture at all. Um, and we have many more stations that are en route to receiving these number of visitors as well. We start off by building a station that is clearly recognizable because we believe that if you can see the infrastructure, you will know that it is there. So it is not only advertising for EV drivers, but it is also advertising for petrol drivers. We want them to see and be curious, what's that yellow thing along the highway? And if they look into it and they will read that it is an EV charging station, they may continue reading and they may become interested in EV uh, as soon as they have to make a decision for their next car. So I've been on several road trips myself because in the Netherlands, if I drive around, I know all the stations and I feel very comfortable. But as soon as I cross the border, I feel like an EV newbie. I have all the anxiety that any new EV driver has. Where can I find the stations? Will they work? Do I have access? And maybe also, what does it cost? But that comes at the last uh, part. 
So this is a picture from a trip into Norway. Uh, basically, uh, Oslo is the EV capital of the, of the world, and I wanted to experience that for myself. And the first time I drove around in Oslo, I felt like in a movie. There's electric cars everywhere. So I was like, oh, this is going to be, uh, be the future. But after having done 10,000 kilometers of EV trips and visiting about 10 countries, there's also some learning points that we need to address in order to create freedom for electric drivers. So the first one is that the car and the, and, and the charger, they should be compatible. And it sounds really simple, but it is not. I've experienced already this year, just a couple of months ago, on two different occasions, on two different networks, that the car I was driving was not compatible with the charger. Uh, and it's very frustrated. Uh, so um, th what's happening here today, EV EVs being tested with chargers, that's a really good thing. So if you're involved in that, keep on doing it, double up your efforts, because it's much better to do the testing on testing symposia like today, rather than to have it being tested by customers in the field. Also, what is important is roaming. So we want to have easy access to our own network. OCPI is an open protocol that anyone can implement, and it allows the exchange of data. So what we exchange is location data of our charges and our, of our stations. We exchange data about our tariffs, uh, but we also allow other RFID cards to be used on our own network. So anyone carrying an RFID card of the likes of plug surfing, new motion, or EV box, you can just tap it on our charger and charging will begin without having to worry about the, all these access issues. And uh, we are very pleased with the uh, OCPI protocol, since that allows us to implement such roaming agreements with relative ease. What's extremely important and what I take personal pride in is uptime. If you arrive somewhere, you have to know that charging will work. So that's already by design that we uh, always install at least two charges. So two is the absolute minimum for us, but ideally we place three, and in some cases already four fast charges on a single site. This means that there is, if there's any mishap with one charger, at least there's one or two other charges that you can take advantage of. And right now, with all the announcement in the, in the market, uh, two is even not enough to uh, handle the, the amount of e electric vehicle that is coming onto the market. We're already seeing more and more queuing at our stations, so we're already planning ahead to make upgrades to our existing stations in 2019. So we strive for close to 100% uptime to make sure that we can do uh, whatever we can in order to ensure that all the EV drivers are able to charge their car. We're also seeing more cars that are able to take a higher charge rate. We already began installing high-powered chargers earlier this year. And at that time, people also thought, what are you doing? There's not even cars for that. Why are you wasting the money on that? But of course, we knew what was coming. And we knew that we had to be prepared for vehicles that can charge up to 150 kilowatts or even more. And today, I've seen a lot of vehicles being tested that can do this uh, as well. This also brings freedom for the electric driver. So I already mentioned the visibility of stations. You need to be able to see the infrastructure. You need to have a network. You need to have access to the network. It has to work from a technical perspective, so the car and the charger have to be compatible, but also it has to be fast. So with these new cars and the new chargers, instead of having to wait for 30 minutes before you can continue your trip, maybe you only need to wait 10 minutes to, in order to continue a trip. Uh, and that's, of course, a big improvement towards freedom for the EV driver. I'm a bit of a nerd, and maybe my colleagues will say, not a bit, you are a nerd. Um, but I like to collect data, and we love to see new cars uh, arriving on the market and checking out our stations. And what we do is we take the charge curves from those cars. So this is a collection of charge curves that we have collected over uh, the last couple of months. And these are all the cars that can charge with uh, more than 50 kilowatts. So it ranges from the Opel Ampere E, Jaguar I-Pace, Mercedes EQC, uh, and also the Audi e-tron. And as you can see, everyone is pushing the envelope. Everyone wants to charge faster and, and uh, sustain that high charge rate for longer. And we think it will become a sales argument as well. So not only range is important, but if you can charge your car faster, 
that's an important uh, decision for future EV drivers as well. We also like to make it easy for our customers in order to start their charge session. Uh, nowadays, you can start charging using your RFID card or by uh, using your phone and using an app. Uh, we introduced Auto Charge earlier this year, and this means that once your account is set up, all you need to do is plug in your car and charging will begin. How easy is that? So this is uh, something that we implemented early this year, and we asked our customers how, if they liked it or not. 95% of the customers were extremely positive. So from a customer's perspective, everyone wants ease of use. And the easier we make it for uh, the existing EV drivers and wannabe EV drivers, the quicker the adoption rate of EVs will be. So I already mentioned visibility is key, not only during the day, but as you can see, also during the night. So we spend a lot of time and effort on optimizing our stations. And the next step that we are doing is now optimizing our stations also for trucks, because everyone is focused on uh, cars right now, but the trucks will also come. And uh, basically, everything that can drive will eventually become electric. So in terms of freedom, it is uh, freedom uh, to drive around wherever you please and without having to worry if you can charge or not and how you can get access. Thank you. <laughs>